Straight all day. Straight all day. The overseas basketball blueprint. The question I'm going to add, answer in uh, this episode is how good do you need to be to play overseas basketball? If you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you like, comment to, on the video, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you're getting every piece of new content we're putting out. When it comes to overseas basketball, we're putting these out every other day. If you're listening to this on the podcast app, Spotify, Apple, whatever, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts to so let all the other ball players in the world know this is the place to get information about playing basketball overseas. All that being said, we're answering the question here, how good do you need to be to play professional basketball overseas? This is a question that has always been difficult for me to answer because it's hard to, it's not hard, it's actually impossible to quantify how good a basketball player is. How can you quantify that? Like, all right, so you need to be a level 80 or you gotta be 85 or you gotta be like 90% as good as LeBron James to play overseas. It doesn't really work like that because all of that becomes super subjective and it's really hard to nail down and explain to any person because we all look, we all see things differently, right? At different, different perspectives. Here's the actual answer to the question. Since there are, in professional basketball right now, according to Eurobasket, there are just under 5,000 American-born players playing professional basketball around the world right now this year. Just under 5,000. So that's not counting. That's actually, that is counting with the NBA and the G League. That's a little under 1,000. Let's say that's about 750 players. Then them, plus everybody else who's playing overseas who's American-born, you got under, just under 5,000 players playing, period. So that's South America, Mexico, uh, Canadian leagues, everywhere, Europe, Asia, Australia, all that, Africa, all that, okay? I'm telling you that to help answer this question, understanding that as a baseline, for you to play professional basketball overseas, you need to be in that top 5,000. All right, so if it's five, let's just say it's 5,000 jobs for American-born players around the world, you need to be one of the top 5,000. In other words, you need to be better than one of the 5,000 who has a job right now. If you don't have a job this year and you want one next year, you need to be better than one of the 5,000 who has a job today. Now, between this year and next year, a handful of players are going to retire. They're going to say, no, I don't want to play professional basketball anymore. A few players are going to get injured. They can't play professional basketball anymore. A few players are going to want to keep playing, but they're going to get beat out by some new player who's not in the game now, but is going to be in the game next year who beat them out for a spot. You need to be one of them, all right? Or you could be one of, you could take the place of the injured player who can't play anymore or the retired player who chose to not play anymore or the player who wants to play but you took their spot. But you gotta be better than one of those. And who knows how many new players come in each year. I've never seen that stat, but let's just make up a number here, all right? Just for the sake of this conversation, I'm gonna make up a number. Let's say between retired players, uh, injured players no longer can perform and players who just got beat out for their spot. Let's say there's, let's say 400 new players every season. So this season right now, overseas, whenever you're watching this, if there's an overseas season happening right now or about to happen, let's say 400 of the players playing overseas right now were not playing the year before. They had never played overseas before this, but they are playing overseas right now. You need to be one of those top 400 in order to get that job. Now, again, I'm just making up that number. All right, so nobody say that I don't don't put that out as an actual fact. I'm just making it up for the sake of this conversation. You need to be better than one of them or as in that group to be as good as them in order to get on overseas. That's the actual answer to the question. How good do you need to be? Here's the reason why that's the answer to the question. Sometimes in life, how good you need to be is just based on you know, having a certain set of skills. So, for example, if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, there are certain requirements in every state that you have to pass. So let's just say if you want to be a lawyer, you have to have a, a law degree from some university, some accredited university. Then you have to take the bar exam, which is the exam. And I don't know all that well, but I think I got this part right. You got to take the bar exam, which basically qualifies you if you pass it to practice law in a particular state. And I believe every single state has its own bar exam. There might be some exams that cover multiple states. So let's say you live in Florida, like I do, I'm in Miami and you wanna be a lawyer in Florida, you wanna open up your own law practice, or you wanna join some firm, or you wanna be a public defender in you know, Miami Beach, whatever. What do you have to do? You gotta to go to law school, get a law degree, then you have to take the bar exam. I think you gotta have a law degree even to take the exam, I think, I don't know. Then you pass the bar exam, now you are qualified to practice law 
in the state of Florida. You're just qualified. It doesn't mean you have any clients. Doesn't mean you got a job. Doesn't mean you make any money. It just means you're qualified to do it. You have the you have this certification. Now you are good enough to be a lawyer. That's it. So someone was asking me how do you be, how good you got to be to be a lawyer. I would tell them what I just told you. All right, as simple as that. And I don't know anything about the whole process, but I think I got it generally. That's pretty much how it goes. So if anybody's a lawyer watching this, you can correct me in the comment section. Now, all, all that, if you want to be a doctor, similar, you go to school, you go to medical school, whatever kind of doctor you're trying to become, I'm sure there's some kind of exam you got to pass for that. I don't know what it's called or how to take it. You go find that out if you want to be a doctor. I'm sure somebody can tell you. And then you are qualified, you are certified to practice whatever type of medicine or whatever type of you know, doctoring you want to practice okay and as many people as meet the requirements they can all do it so if a hundred people pass the bar exam i actually i don't even know if that's true because i think i heard somebody say something different that you might have to finish in the if a hundred people take the bar exam then only maybe the top half or the top 25 percent or the top 10 or whatever maybe everybody who passes gets in if a hundred people pass a hundred people can practice law or maybe it's only the top half of people who pass I don't even know but whatever those rules are it's a hard it's a number it's a clear set number that if you do this this and this you can practice all and as many people can get in get in when it comes to basketball it does not work like that the reason it doesn't work in basketball the same way that it works in being a, a lawyer or a doctor is that uh, technically theoretically rather if i wanted to become a lawyer and i did all the work and passed all the requirements i could open my law practice across the street and then if somebody else wanted to do something they go open another law practice on the other side of the street and then another person, another person, a thousand different people could all become lawyers in this one city, an additional thousand lawyers in this one city. If we all pass the requirements that are necessary, I don't think there's a cap on how many people can be lawyers. I've never heard of that. I've never heard him say, hey, right now in Pennsylvania is only 10 more people can become lawyers. Other than that, you got to get on a waiting list until 10 people quit and then you could jump in. I've never heard that before. So as far as I know, as many people as meet the qualifications, they can become lawyers or they can become doctors. Now, how are they gonna make money? How are they gonna get clients and all that? That's another thing they're gonna to have to figure out. All right, that's, a, that's above what I understand, at least as far as this conversation goes. But they all can do it as long as they qualify. In the basketball world, everybody can't qualify simply because there ain't jobs for everybody. See, I can open up my own law practice or my own medical practice in my own building if I wanted to. But you can't open up your own professional basketball team. Well, technically you could, but I mean, how are you going to pay them? You haven't made any money yet. Who are you going to play against? You're not part of a league. You don't have any, you know, you're not certified. You ain't got no arena. You don't have a gym. You don't have any licensing. You ain't got a coach. It's just you. So it's not the same. You understand what I'm saying? For you to play professional basketball, which is a team sport, some team in the world has to sign you. The challenge with that is, regardless of how good you are, is that teams already have players and you're not the only player trying to get on that team so if it's 50 players trying to get on one team and their roster limit is 12 people then at least 38 of those 50 are not going to make the team at least 38 now what if they already got 10 people so now they only taking two so at least 48 of y'all ain't making the team even if all of you are really 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 good even if everybody's very good equally talented Everybody ain't making it simply because this is the way that team sports are set up, that everybody can't get on regardless of how good everybody is. So the answer to the question, how good do you need to be to play professional basketball is you need to be better than somebody who's already playing. You need to be better or just as good as somebody who's already playing. Just as good, you could take their spot if they leave. Better if you're trying to take somebody's spot who doesn't want to leave. That's the game. That's why this game is so competitive. That's why these spots are so coveted. That's why it's such a big deal to play professional sports, you know, especially team sports, football, baseball, basketball, hockey. Why? Because everybody's trying to play. Well, not everybody, but so many people are trying to play. And amongst the number who are trying to get on, only a small percentage actually do get on and get a chance to stay on. That's why it's such a big deal as opposed to many other professions where as many people are, that qualify, they can just get in the game. All right, this is a whole different setup. So that's the answer to the question. If anybody was still wondering, now you know. If you have not yet claimed your free copy of this book, The Overseas Basketball Blueprint, I'm going to tell you where to get it. Go to balloverseas.com. It's the link down below wherever you're watching this. Balloverseas.com. I made the book free. This is a 237-page book. We used to sell this book on Amazon for $49.95. That is a true story. I made it free. Zero. All you do is cover a small shipping charge, and we will ship this book to you worldwide. 
anywhere that you live. Again, balloverseas.com. For the other aspects of overseas basketball, you want to learn the truth about exposure camps, we got a book for that. You want to learn how basketball agents work, why they sign players and why they don't, we got a book for that. And if you want to know the business side of the game, how overseas basketball works, know the basics of overseas ball so understand the business of the game so you can avoid wasting your talent and watch your sports career window slam shut in your face, we got a book for that. It's called Overseas Basketball Secrets. All four of those together, we call that the Overseas Blueprint Bundle. If you want all four, because there's a little checkbox on that form, you can get all four. If you just want one, you just want the blueprint book, that's cool too. You can just get this book. This book is free regardless. All you do is cover a small shipping charge, again, at balloverseas.com. Work on your game. Dre, all day.